Joining us from the UK, international best-selling author Ruth Ware. Oh my gosh. Well, I have been sitting backstage listening to all the talks and marveling at this stellar lineup and trying to figure out how on earth I ended up on stage <laughs> following so many of my own literary heroes. Um, it is maybe appropriate, therefore, that I would like to talk to you this evening about imposter syndrome. <laughs> because here's the thing, I have always wanted to be a writer, right back as far as I can remember. Um, I was always scribbling little stories that grew into longer stories, and finally, by the time I was a teenager, into, I guess, book-length things, maybe not books. All through my teens and my 20s, I was writing and writing, but for some reason, I never tried to get published. I kept writing and putting my books under the bed, and I think it was this combination of raging imposter syndrome and something else, kind of the opposite, a kind of pride and a reluctance to know for sure that I was not good enough. It wasn't until I had kids that something changed. I was on maternity leave with my second baby. I was in a library looking down the barrel of having to go back to work at a fairly demanding job. And I realized suddenly that my writing was a hobby. And I didn't have time for hobbies anymore. I barely had time to wash my hair. If I didn't find a way to make my writing pay, ideally enough for an extra day's childcare, I was not going to be able to keep doing this thing that I loved. And so, for the first time, I invested in myself. I bought a cheap laptop so that I could type while my baby napped. I bought books. Stephen King's on writing. I submitted and I got rejected. <laughs> of course I did. The worst had happened. Someone had echoed that little voice in my head and told me that no, actually, I was not good enough. Five years before, I would have shelved the book. I would have crawled back into my shell, but this time something had changed. Maybe Having kids had made me braver, more willing to sacrifice my pride for something that I truly wanted. Maybe this time I had written a book that I simply couldn't bear to shelve. Whatever the reason, I kept revising, I kept submitting, and eventually I found an agent and a publisher. And 15 years later, here I am. Of course, that little voice in the back of my head saying, is this really the best you can do? That little voice has not been silenced by being published. Uh, it has stayed very loud. It has given me some uh, pretty sleepless nights, uh, mostly at 3 a.m. in the morning when I'm too far, a manuscript, too far through a manuscript to quit. Um, but it has also pushed me to try harder, to hone my craft, I think it has made me a better writer. And for that reason, I never want to silence it. Or well, not completely. But there is another reason why I want to keep listening to that voice. And it's one that is not actually about me at all. Because the flip side of the question, why me, is the answer, why not her, or him, or them? Because the truth is, I have been astonishingly lucky with my career. I've been lucky with my books. I've been lucky with my timing. I have been lucky, most of all, with my simply extraordinary publisher, the reason we're all here tonight. And there are plenty of amazing writers who haven't been as lucky as me, writers who fully deserve a place at the table, but who haven't been given one for whatever reason. And that, that is something that I never want to forget. So. I guess what I have learned over the years from my imposter syndrome is not to ignore that little voice inside your head, to try to listen to it, learn from it when you can, let it make you more careful, more diligent, more exacting, but 
don't let it make you afraid and never, ever let it shut you up. Thank you.